expectations of the white coat are enormous and undoubtedly already evident to you all. Sanyo is basically the only school that when I got done interviewing, I was like extremely excited. It was exciting and it was a little overwhelming. You can think of the white coat ceremony as the official start to your medical career. Elizabeth Adler. Um, I was really intrigued just by all the ways that I could be educated not only in the classroom but really outside of the classroom as well. And it really appealed to me that there was a medical school that was willing to try new things, that was willing to push boundaries and experiment with improving the way uh, doctors are trained. We are bursting with pride. When I started doing more research about Mount Sinai, I really liked the ethos. They really stress compassionate care. When I came here, when I talked to faculty here, uh, the faculty seemed just really approachable. At the same time, they were impressive in what they did in terms of research, their visions for the kind of place they wanted Mount Sinai to be. Kelm Amu Achampa. Uh, I picked Mount Sinai primarily because of its commitment to the outside community. I definitely made a great decision in coming here. It's such a relaxed and supportive environment to learn. What I really expect out of these next two years is that I'll learn a lot, I will get the most that I can out of every single course, and then it's off to do a PhD. You've had diarrhea for about three days, you've had abdominal pain. Can you just tell me a little bit about issues that have happened in the past with you? Have you ever been hospitalized, for example? Uh, no. Classes have been going pretty well so far. Do you have a primary care physician? Uh, yeah. It's a huge experience to just dive into, and that's kind of been my approach to it so far, to just dive into everything, to keep my eyes open, to be uh, open yeah. to trying anything out here. Some sort of an antibiotic? Antibiotic. Mm -hmm. Today in ASM, which is the Art and Science of Medicine, part of our first year curriculum, we were practicing history taking with a standardized patient. A standardized patient is an actor who is trained to simulate a particular condition and personality and build a complete history just in the same way that a physician would at a real clinical encounter. You might want to know about sweats and chills. You might want to know if he ate anything. In today's particular session, we had a patient who came in. He was a little distant, a little hard to reach, so in order to actually talk to him about what was going on. We had to be sensitive, we had to be caring, we had to show a lot of these things that you don't necessarily learn in a class, you only learn them through practice. And that's what makes the art and science of medicine a very valuable part of our curriculum. At some interventions like that to slow down the progress of Alzheimer's disease. Dr. Guy Montgomery and Julie Schnur. My professors have almost without exception been exceptional. They're all clearly gifted lecturers. Um, when you get into brain and behavior. They are all incredibly invested in our learning and training us to be doctors, whether they're anatomists, whether they are doctors themselves, whether they are biochemists. We are constantly told to come in for help if we're struggling. They are constantly making themselves accessible to us. It's very progressive school. Hey, my name's Avi and I'll be administering the flu shot today. Sinai also focuses a lot on like the soft skills how to interview patients, how to talk to people, social and cultural issues, and things of that nature. <laughs> it's been good that way. Mount Sinai's location straddling East Harlem and the Upper East Side is an amazing clinical opportunity, really, to see all sorts of different cases and also to be immersed within a community in East Harlem that's one of the most underserved communities in New York. Teaching has really been a passion of mine. I would like to get a little bit more involved in the East Harlem community. Right now I've taken the initiative to join a mentoring program called MedDocs in which uh, we have high school students, they come here at least once a week and we teach them health lessons on a number of topics, like for example, this week we talked about the heart and we actually did a heart dissection. Sinai has set up the curriculum in such a way that competition between students has been eliminated. There's no curving, no grades, just strictly pass-fail. That allows you to work easily with your friends because there's no pressure of trying to do better than somebody else. Everyone's on an even playing field. 
My classmates are fascinating people from all over the country, all over the world. We have a five-time national champion speed climber in our class. We have a woman with a PhD in immunology. So it's been an incredibly exciting, interesting experience. I have less difficulty passing urine. That's not to say that it's not a problem sometimes. You describe, like you did the last time, with a little bit more detail. In other words, how often do you find yourself going to the bathroom now during the day? Emin and I were here as part of the longitudinal clinical experience, and this was our second time visiting uh, Mr. Reskis. And basically, we come with his doctor to his patient visits, and it's part of a way for the students to learn about chronic illness and form a relationship, like a lasting uh, patient-doctor relationship with a patient which you don't um, have the experience of, of doing when you're in medical school for the most part. When you do that here, there's, it doesn't pit at all. Right. So lymphedema is non-pitting. The point of the program is over the course of two years to help them transition from becoming acquainted with a patient to becoming ultimately clinically responsible for the patient. And it's, it's kind of the transition you hope that students will go through in the course of medical school but in most places, students don't get that kind of access to patients. And this way, what they're learning in the classroom about uh, communication skills or bioethics or how to examine a patient, they actually get to see firsthand in the lives of the patients they take care of. As they develop the clinical skills over the course of the first two years, they get to come and see the patient and practice those clinical skills. But then quickly learning how to do the basics of a physical exam and then more sophisticated stuff than that. The first year is a lot of classwork, and it's really nice to be able to get out in the field and actually see a patient every once in a while to remind yourself why you're here and really make a connection with the people that you'll be helping. Climbing requires concentration, but not so much in the sense as pure intellectual focus. It's a sense of freedom. It's a really a sense of calm for me when I'm climbing. I'm not thinking about anything in the outside world. I try to use climbing as much as I can as an outlet to relax in between studying and the hard work that we have to put in for medical school. Even though we're studying medicine here in the heart of Manhattan, we get to utilize Central Park, which is right at our fingertips. Right now we're in the northeast corner of Central Park, only about 12 blocks from Mount Sinai. Climbing is, I think it's somewhat analogous to future in medicine because there's an element of performing under pressure. You can't lose sight of the big picture while you're climbing or you'll put yourself in danger. Central Park has so far been a fantastic outlet from school for climbing, running, biking, and the leaves are starting to change now, so it's a great place to relax. You were born here? I was born here. Both of my parents met here. Um, oh, that's, they met here? They met here. At the end of first year, all of us have the opportunity to take on a research project for the summer. Research will be part of our, our clinical training, but also being an overarching focus in everything that we do. Just being an athlete at orthopedics was one of the fields that really drew me to medicine, so I wanted to take the opportunity to delve deeper into that. My role in Kelms's summer uh, experience is to be his mentor, and what a mentor is is someone who really creates an environment that is conducive to scientific growth. So I was excited to offer him a position, and since then he's on his own time, has read a lot of the work, and has asked good questions, and has really shown dedication to the work. Using your limbs, your tendon isn't getting stretched. We study tendons in our lab. We study how tendons accumulate damage um, and how they heal and recover. What Kanz and I were working on today is applying a fatigue loading cycle, so a large number of cycles, to an isolated tendon using load control, meaning that we're applying a load, and then we're measuring how this tendon is displacing or deforming under that load. My small piece of the project will be investigating exercise and apoptosis inhibitors and how these will play a role in restoring pre-injured or healthy gait patterns. In my case with Dr. Underwar's period was a little informal, you know, I just set up a meeting just to talk about orthopedics in general and two, three months down the road working on a project together. Really you can do something, anything you're passionate about here. 
Looking back on my entire first year, I realized just, just how far I've come, you know, learning pathology and all these other things that I hadn't been exposed to before, I just realized just how much I've grown. Think of it as like, you know, a, I guess Wait, the weekend. Even in like Tel Aviv. At the end of the school year, students are given an opportunity to engage in any sort of research project that they would like. And Mount Sinai has a great global health office that uh, affords us the opportunity to do research in many different places around the world. I was very excited to take on the opportunity to go to Israel and to do work in childhood obesity. As AB's mentor, my role is really to see from start to finish how uh, the summer research project uh, takes off. From the very beginning when we formulate what the question is that we want to ask with the community that we're working with, to its implementation, to the completion, and then all that follows. That's, I'm just going to right. plan my vacation. Yeah, no, you should. I will be serving parents in a clinic and I'll be asking them about their beliefs on nutrition, I'll be asking them about how their children eat and things of that nature. So what we see in Israel, which is a developed nation, is the pattern that we see pretty much across the globe. As countries develop, people start to eat less healthy food and they're less active and as a result, there's a rise in obesity rates. Sinai has many opportunities for students to get involved in global health research. I'm going to Israel, but there are many interesting places that my friends are going to and I think it's one of the things I like the most about the school. My experience so far in my first year at Mount Sinai has been great. You know, I can get the science that to become a very good doctor is to learn how to be a compassionate and understanding one. Every day we see something that's incredibly fascinating. It's definitely sunk in that I am here and this is what I'm doing and I'm actually on my path to being a doctor. There's just a lot of different life experiences that manifests itself in our small groups, in the culture of the school. It's exciting to be around that. It's phenomenal how supportive everyone here is. Looking ahead to the next few years, I do expect to work hard, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm very excited about the next four years. I'm also very curious to see how everything will turn out. I'm now part of a larger group, something that's bigger than myself. This, this is a, a great day. I'm really loving my life here, very comfortable, and it's starting to feel like home. <laughs>